Each year, Formula One visits a wide variety of world-class circuits and Sochi, on which 20 of the world's best or richest drivers battle it out wheel to wheel for victory. It's an amazing spectacle from the noise to the crowds. Who wouldn't want to experience it? But imagine if you had all of that in your very own doorstep. Say you wanted to build your own Formula One track. How much would it cost? Well, boys and girls, today we're about to find out. Right, first off, you're going to need some land. Since unless you land stroll or study at Eton, your back garden isn't going to be quite big enough to accommodate a whole F1 track. Now, land prices obviously vary a lot depending on where you live. But in the UK, an acre of land costs roughly between 12 and 15k from what I found. Yet the more you buy, the cheaper it seems to get. So after doing some research, I'm going to say we're going to be paying six grand per acre, which doesn't seem too bad, right? However, we're going to need a little bit more than one acre, lads. Silverstone, for example, has 437 acres of track-related land, which does seem a little bit overkill. So I reckon we round it down to a nice round four hundred acres, which will cost us a handsome two point four million pounds, which is the same amount I heard Veloce paying Tomo and Aldas. <laughs> so you've got your land; it's time to build. Ah, ah, ah. Not so fast, my child. Before we can even think about laying any tarmac, we need some groundwork doing. Remember, to host an F1 race, you need to meet grade one standards. So no cutting corners. We need this place to be tip-top condition, which is probably going to cost us around 40 mil. Yay. But anyway, we now finally have our land. We have stable ground. It's time to build the track itself. Now, to design the layout, you're probably going to have to employ this man, Herman Tilker, the go-to guy for F1 tracks. Master mind behind legendary circuits like Shanghai, Spang, Istanbul, but also Sochi and Yas Marina, so you know, swings and roundabouts. After he's Design the track, the tarmac can finally now be laid. Wee hey Party time, lads. Well, it's party time if you have a spare 40 million pounds lying around anyway. And that's if we go for the cheapest option as well. The more keen we get added elevation changes, cool corners, banking, basically just making the track more exciting will push that cost right up to like 80 million. But come on, boys, we're on a budget. We can't be having any fancy corners. 40 mil, that's it. So now we have the track. It's there. The cars can drive around it. But we still need somewhere for them all to park. The pit lane. Yeah, of course, it's not just the pit lane, is it? We need some of all the fans family, celebs, and other rich bastards to sit as well. So it's the pit lane plus the paddock club on top. And we're looking at around £40 million pounds again. Yeah, after some extra research, I saw that Singapore the dares for almost half of that. And like I said, lads, we're on a budget. So let's call it 20 mil and move on, all right? So now the rich and the racers have somewhere to sit in park. It's time to accommodate us peasants with some grandstands. Now, Silverstone apparently spent £27 million recently redoing theirs. So let's take that amount and lower it down to 25 since we're cheap skates. And there we go. The bank account is screaming. But we have somewhere for all the orange army to sit. Now, at this point, it may seem like a lot of the heavy hitters in terms of money are out of the way. All the major infrastructures built. Our poor, poor wallet shouldn't get raided too much more, should it, lads? Hmm. I got some bad news. Because, lads, we need cables, electric, safety things, timing monitors, a load of miscellaneous technical bits that I don't really understand, which is gonna cost bare. Which means a lot, by the way. Another 25 mil, to be exact. Can you just excuse me a minute, lads? I need a second because I'm never gonna financially recover from this. And yet, after all of this, we're still not done. Because we need somewhere for the press to set up. A purpose-built building where they can go over their notes, edit their photos, compose their next clickbait title. <laughs> I'm joking, lads. Well, kind of. And all of that should apparently cost us around 12 million, but I'm going to lower that down to 10 because we're going to make our building a little bit smaller so we can pick and choose who comes in. Those wankers from the sun can sit outside. Speaking of outside, we also need to spend another 10-ish million to build places for events, hotels, toilet blocks, just any random buildings and stuff like that you might find around the track. Yeah, I feel we could definitely cut this price down because we can bin off the hotel. Again, we're on a budget, remember, lads. We can let someone across the road build a hotel or something. And thus, after the hotel's gone, I feel like we can get the price down to maybe like five mil. That may be wishful thinking, lads, but you know, let's manifest it, all right? <laughs> and with that money saved from bidding off the hotel, it means we can use it to build the last necessary component of the track, the medical center. Now, for a track to be suitable for an F1 race, it needs a fully equipped mini hospital, really. Silverstone, for example, has multiple wards, a four-bed resuscitation room, burns unit, x-ray and ultrasound facilities, the whole shebang. And apparently, from what I can find, lads, we can do all of that for just four mil. What a bargain! And so, finally, our track track is now complete. We've built the bare minimum, don't get me wrong, it's nothing fancy, but it should still be enough to host our very own Formula 1 race. And all it cost was a light £171.4 million. Pounds. Or if you're American, £236.2 million. <laughs> and remember, lads, I cannot stress this enough, this is the bare minimum. Most tracks do cost a lot more than this to build. I mean, Abu Dhabi, right, apparently cost £1.2 to build. And also, we should remember that budgets, especially for big building projects, always go over. So it's unlikely we'd even build this this for under 200 mil if all went well. But for now, lads, that doesn't matter, right? We'll just ignore all of that. We have our own track. That's the important bit. We've got all the facilities, everything we need to meet grade one standards. All that's left to do is to call up F1 and let them know we're ready for them. If only it was that simple. <laughs> because, of course, in true F1 fashion, to just host the race itself, more money is needed. And I mean a lot more money. The average 
cost the Hosen F1 racers £27 million. But that can vary to a high of £70 million. And these fees automatically rise like 5-10% to year upon year. So it's only going to get more expensive as it goes on. And not to mention, to even get F1 to consider you for a race, probably costs an unknown amount of bribing or business deals. I don't really know what goes on behind the scenes, surprisingly. Don't worry, I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm sure we're just racing in Saudi Arabia just because we love the country so much. Nothing to do with money at all. But yeah, there you have it, lads. It is definitely not simple to build and host your own Formula 1 race. I'm really, really not cheap either. But now you know how to do it. Oh, well, you know how to build the track anyway. And I think now when we next all visit a circuit or see one on TV, we might all have a little bit more appreciation for the time and money that's gone into building that track and getting F1 to race there. Or at the very least, we'll just get sad that someone paid half a billion pounds to build Sochi. <laughs> but yeah, lads, that's been it from me. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. I've been Aiden, this Mr. Aiden Rule. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.